were in the fifth grade and our superintendent of schools decided to, without really consulting parents and students, decided to uh, cut recess in half from 20 minutes to 10 minutes. And that really got us upset. And even at a young age, um, I just knew that we sh could have been consulted and that the communication on the matter could have been much much more efficient than it was, and she probably could have saved herself some trouble. We started a petition and we kind of got five minutes back, so we got back up to like 15 minutes. We have a student here who's on campus who's been very much involved in these, and uh, I, I can imagine that he will, even after he leaves Emerson, will be involved in this issue or some other issue that will become a strong advocate uh, for, um, you know, for gun safety and, and so on. It was Dr. Payne's uh, student activism of the 60s and 70s class. It's a class he teaches. It's a special in communication topics. And um, a few students from that class had already been very active politically. And we sort of just said, you know, why don't we you know, start something, you know, start something somewhat informal here where we can just help, um, you know, spread the word about things happening, whether it's in Boston or around the country, just policies happening, demonstrations, um, you know, protests. And if we can just provide people with, with the awareness of what's happening, they can decide for themselves how they want to participate. But the thing is, this isn't just about parkland. Gun violence did not start on February 14th. This is not new. And us Parkland kids, we're not special. I wish we were the only ones to have ever known this, but we're not. You know, I, I think these rallies and these protests are great. I've been attending a lot of them in the last, you know, three years. But if there's one thing I can say, it's just, I really think it's important to march. I see 50,000 to 75,000 people marching. When the idea first came to the, the students in Parkland, I think that the main goal was you know, not one more, which was not one more student killed in school, not one more teacher having to jump in front of you know, a student to save their lives because of a gunman running around the school slaughtering students. Just the, the number of people that are, are killed in this country or are injured in this country, um, buy a firearm is, it's unacceptable for, for a functioning and a, and a developed society. Around you. The whole commons belongs to you. These are terrible, terrible, terrible events, but they don't tell the whole truth or the whole picture behind gun violence in this country. It is a public health crisis. I would say that the goals of this, of, of the march, but also of the movement in general, is to, to come together and, and actually pass substantial gun reform. The future, as one student said wonderfully to, um, to uh, a congressman, we will outlive you. Uh, and so I think uh, that, at least I hope, that over time uh, we'll see a shift uh, in attitudes. And I think it's really important just to see that a lot of people care about it and like this comment is filled with people who came out to support this cause and it's really empowering and like it is emotional like I've cried a few times on the march just because of how moving it is to see people actually use their right to protest. Because I think I think public service is not just taking responsibility for your own life and the decisions that affect your own life but the decisions that affect you know, the people you love and your neighbors and, and your friends and, you know, the community that, whether that you either grow up in or that you live in. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's vital to a healthy democracy. How can, you, how can you have an active and a healthy democracy if you don't have an active citizenry? Uh, the NRA used to be something that was a society of, of uh, gun owners who, who use their guns for sport, and now it's um, it's not mostly funded by their members. It's mostly funded by gun manufacturers and gun companies, and.
who then, you know, the NRA takes their money and then just donates it to, to politicians who will then pass or not pass, um, you know, different, different gun legislation. So I can imagine him in the future uh, developing a real, you know, a significant leadership position around this issue or, uh, you know, related issues. So I'm very, I'm very proud of him.